Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I tell you. The exception mean of Angel is Messenger and the exception mean of Destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels, the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Virginia Graves. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future and transform the present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic reiki, angel oracle cards, guided meditation, hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. I've also created several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, and a six-week guide meditation series to help you step into confidence. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation or an angel oracle card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Regina Graves, about how we can develop mindset, confidence, and leadership skills. Now, Regina is known as the Limitations Eliminator and is the founder of Break Limits Coaching and Consulting. Regina brings 20 years of real-world corporate experience to small businesses and entrepreneurs. She is a woman leader in a predominantly male environment, breaking through being the first female in several positions that she has held. Now, Regina has also provided training to more than 5,000 people nationwide and serves on several non-profit boards. She helps entrepreneurs and small businesses go from smoke to fire. Her passion is coaching women to develop their mindset, confidence and leadership skills. Regina has a strong presence in her community, supporting troubled teens through aggression replacement trainings, youth leadership programs and mentoring foster youth. She also feeds, feeds clothes and provides blankets to the homeless in her local community. Now, through Break Limits Coaching and Consulting, she offers hybrid coaching programs, business consulting, trainer certifications, public speaker training and leadership training, as well as being a grandmother. And she doesn't even look like it. So how knows she fits all of this in? And with testimonials such as Ms. Graves rocks, fun, easygoing, upbeat, truly wanting to help and see you succeed. Thank you for all your time, work and effort effort. It was a lot of work and long days, but I feel like I've improved and I've learned a lot of things that I had neglected about myself for a while and did not realise things had changed in my life. Regina provided outlets and responses that were transitioning in my thinking for what I used to think about versus how I currently feel today. So without further delay, hello Regina and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I am great, Ray. Thank you so much for having me here on the Angels and Destiny show. Oh, you're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you all that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Virginia and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Virginia, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can go from smoke to fire? So I started off, I grew up very, very poor um, in a city back in Virginia. And I think early on, you know, we get guidance through our, you know, our Lord and Savior. And I think a lot of my guidance started even in my youth, you know, where there were times where I was scared of certain things. And I think that's what happens with a lot of us as women. There's so much that we can do. and We have so much impact that we can create. We have so much power within ourselves and we get scared, scared of the unknown, scared of failure, you know, scared for so many different reasons. And I think as a youth, I was taught to embrace and face that fear and that scared. I was a runaway. I ran away three times as a kid because there were some things that were just going on in my home that were somewhat unbearable. And I would run away, but I would always end up being brought right back to the place that I ran from. So it was almost like the Lord was saying, nope, you're not going to run. You're going to face this. And through life, that has also taught me to stand you know, despite how scared I was, despite how worried I was, I was going to stand, I was going to face it. And and I did. So it developed a level of resilience. The things you go through in life, sometimes people, you know, oh my God, I've been through so much. A lot of us have been through a whole lot of things. What that helped us do 
it helps us build a level of resilience, the ability to get through, the, the ability to continue. It gives us a, something to reflect back on and say, you know, that was really, really bad. I remember one time staying in a homeless shelter with my mom. It was me, my mother, um, and my two younger brothers. And for a long time, I was so ashamed of that story. And then I thought about it. At that age, I was about 13 years old and my brothers were younger, but we were staying in this big house. That's what was set up as a homeless shelter. And my mom slept on one edge and my brother and my brother slept in between me and my mother. I was on the outer edge because we were in a room full of people we didn't know. Some of them drug addicts, some of them alcoholics. But the goal was at that time, no matter how scared I was, we had to protect the little people in between us. So we embraced it and we did what we had to. And for a long time, you know, people go through things and you should never be ashamed of your story. You should never be ashamed of what you went through that brought you to the point that you are now, because that helps you help somebody else. I was doing a, I also ride motorcycles. Um, during one of our motorcycle events, there was a young lady that was talking to me and she started to share her story. Um, and she felt ashamed of her story. And we had some similarities. She had been through some things in her life. She had stayed, she had been homeless. So we started sharing stories and encouraging her to understand not to be ashamed of that story. That helped encourage you. That helped give you the drive that you need to be where you are now. And now she's a case manager and she's helping people that have gone through what she also went through. So embrace your fear, stand fast, get through it because you have a story eventually that you're going to help someone else with but you have to embrace it and get through it. Sometimes fear presents itself because we're scared of maybe there's a physical safety we're worried about or an emotional and mental safety that we're worried about, but we still have to stand fast and get through it. Some of the neighborhoods that I lived in, I think prepared me for some of the work that I've done. Um, I grew up in some of, the, some of the roughest neighborhoods back home. And then as my life progressed and continued, I ended up working in prisons where the fear factor wasn't as much. I've had people ask me, it's like, have you ever been in contact with the inmate? Do you walk amongst the prisoners? Do they see? Yes, they're people just like you and I. They're the same people that walk the streets every day. They just committed a crime. They got caught and now they're in prison. You know, so if I had that same mindset, well, oh my goodness, I can't, then I might well not have had a job. Yeah. I may well have not been able to go and do the work that I do. You know, and then also sometimes being a, you know, we as women, depending on the culture and where you are, there's also that look that we shouldn't do certain things. You know, like um, I was a firearms instructor at one point. I was a self-defense instructor as well. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Don't, don't mess. So, and a biker as well. Don't mess with her. <laughs> so with the firearms, you know, I was working at a facility, predominantly male. The population was all male and uh, we needed firearms instructors. Before me, everyone at that location pretty much had been male, you know, and when I go to my boss, I'm like, well, we need firearms instructors. He look, he looks at me and he goes, do you want to do that? Are you serious? And I'm, I'm sitting, I'm scared as all get out because I have no idea what I'm going to face. I've heard the horror stories on you got to roll through the mud and you got to shoot the shotgun and the shotgun has a kick to it, you know, and the shotgun's going to kick you and you're going to end up bruised up. And, and I had shot the shotgun several times because it was part of what we had to do for work and each time only five shots and i still ended up with a bruise so here you know here i'm hearing the stories of you're gonna have to shoot a hundred rounds 200 rounds and i'm just thinking about oh my goodness i know how i felt with five rounds this is gonna be pretty scary you know but i'm standing there in front of my boss and i go you know what i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do this for all the women that you know are scared to do this plus i'm gonna do this so i will be an encouragement for other women who actually have to come through my class so i sit there and i go yes sir i want to do it <laughs> <laughs> so i go through the process it was about two weeks of training and i came through you know we had to qualify to get in and then we also had to shoot a qualifying score back to back to come out of the class or to pass the class, which was really good. And it turned out that having a female instructor that could teach firearms really was encouragement for the other women in our industry. You know, because that, well, a man should be able to do it. Well, if I can do it, you can do it. And you're a female, just like I'm a female. So we're gonna do this thing, right? So it became encouragement. And the same thing for the uh, self-defense class. That was pretty, that was a pretty rough class too. Two weeks of getting your butt kicked and 
rolling around and majority of what was in the class were, were males. So we were paired up and I was paired up. I call him the big old mountain guy. He was a guy from out in the mountains. He big, strong guy, you know, very respectable. But the goal was, you know, since our population was predominantly male, I had to be able to teach our staff, you know, how to do what they needed to, should they be confronted with a violent situation. So I go through and again, same thing. I was like, oh man, this is going to be, this is going to be pretty tough. This is going to be rough. And our morning started off with a jog and a run. And we had to do all these physical activities. They call them dead man crawls. When you get down on your belly and you got to crawl across the gym and there's somebody sprawled out on the floor. You have to scoop them with one arm, you and a partner, and then you have to drag them back on your belly. And then you had to do the squats and the sit-ups and the hurdles. So we were, we were pretty sore. And you know, at some point about midweek, we we're kind of like, Are we, do we really, really want to do this? Do I want to continue? But I go, no, I got to do this. I got to have this resilience, you know, I have to make sure that I'm not going to fail. I'm going to take one for the team. So it didn't matter how sore I was for that two week time period. I went through, I was going to make sure that I showed up, showed up with the, as the best version of me. And when I was sore, we would just kind of look around and laugh at each other and we were going to get through it. And that's what we do. And we, you know, we're all faced with situations like that where we have to show up. There's somebody that's counting on us to make sure that we show up strong that we show up ready and that we show up supportive. So we have to make sure that our mindset is there. So some of the work that I do in my program also helps women develop that mindset. Because again, it's it's all about what you think. It's all about what you think. And every morning, sometimes I have, um, every morning I'll tell myself sometimes, you can get through this. If I have a meeting maybe, or if I have something that I'm worried about the outcome, how is this going to turn out? I'll tell myself right from the beginning, you're going to do well. This is going to be awesome. You're going to go in, you're going to give them your best and you're going to blow them out of the water. You know, and a lot of times just that mindset shift goes in with that. When you go in with that confidence, things will work out just fine. Things work out just fine. Oh God, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, that's an amazing sort of like, um, you know, resume of, of, of of what you've done, you know, um, and, and that you, you know it, it is absolutely absolutely amazing and whilst you were doing that were you bringing up kids as well i was so uh, i have three beautiful daughters and now of course they're grown but my entire time um i was as a mom i was not only being a mom i was married i was a mom i was going to school and i was going to work so I was tackling as many things as I could at once. I don't, they say you're supposed to do things in phases, right? But my craziness, I just decided to do it all at once. So I did, and it was fun. And I still managed to, um, I managed to have time and make the time that I had with my kids count. Because, you know, as a mom, that's also so very important. When you work a lot, you have to make sure that your off time and your free time with your kids is creating the memories. We used to take, we were at one point, we were really, really poor, even starting off as a married couple um, with children. We would uh, take our kids on trips. They would be just simple road trips, nothing extravagant, nothing expensive, a tank of gas, a bucket of chicken, a beach or a state park somewhere that didn't really cost a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And the kids had, they had a lot of fun. They had a ball. Right now, when you talk to them and they love to travel now, when you talk to them, they talk about all the great times that they had. They don't talk about what they ate. They don't even remember how much it took to, you know, to drive there, whether it was any gas. They don't, they don't remember any of that. So this stuff doesn't matter to them as kids. They just remember quality time with, with mom and dad on the beach or in the water or fishing. We like to fish or crabbing, you know, whatever it was that activity that created that memory. That's what they remember. And now to this day, even with them grown, they're now 24, 27, and 20. At this age, they uh, we still do road trips. And they look forward to it. So, I, yes, definitely. I was, I was still a mom. And right now, I'm a grandmom. So I still travel a lot for work. Of course, my transition from the jobs that I had. Um, now I'm our regional manager uh, with a corporation, with a corporate company, along with alongside my break limits coaching business um, and along with the community work that I do as well as the motorcycle riding. Yeah. 
So, do you, ever, did you, uh, do you actually have any free time at all, <laughs> or is or is the most or is the motorcycle riding actually free time really? I do. I consider the motorcycle riding free time. I call it wind therapy. Yeah, I like that. There's nothing like hopping on that bike with a little music and the wind is just blowing. And, you know, you don't have, as, as we would say, you don't have a cage around your neck when you're in a car. So the view seems to be so much different, but it's so relaxing. And then I live close to the beach. So I'll take a drive and I'll ride the coast. I always say when it comes down to anything, and I, I love anything, um, anything natural. So whether it's beaches or mountains or, so one of my favorites saying, if you want to feel the energy, stand close to the element. Yeah. So when I ride my motorcycle and I'm going down the beach, the energy from the ocean and from the waves, you can feel that energy. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, you're 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 so so lucky you're, um, uh, where where you live that you you know you get you get all of that in uh in 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 one hit. So you're you're sort of like you do the community work. Was it a conscious choice to do that, or was it something that just came about naturally? So with the kids, um, I was looking to originally when I first started working with the the children the youth program, I was looking for um, I was looking for something to help children because you know I thought about when I was when I was a youth when I was a kid and some of the things I went through, there was someone that was there to help and give me words of encouragement and you know provide that added support sometimes that I may not have had at home essentially. So I wanted to be that for someone else. And I ended up, I was talking to a coworker at the time and I go, um, I really want to do, I want to do some work. I'm thinking about starting my own nonprofit working with kids. And she goes, you know what? I have a friend that does that. She said, how about this? Let me give you her number and you should connect with her. And that's what I did. So I connected with her. In fact, we're still, we're still really close friends to this day. And we still live, we live on opposite sides of, sides of the U.S., but we're still very close friends and we still keep in contact. But I started volunteering in her youth leadership program, an awesome program out in Georgia. Yeah. And uh, we did various different things with the youth from college readiness to uh, proper dining techniques, team building, job applications, job interviews, you know, things like that. And then that led into me working with them um, in a private practice for aggression replacement training, where there were kids that were sentenced through the Department of Juvenile Justice. The children had gotten into some type of trouble and they had to attend the program um, in lieu of going to like a detention center. Yeah. And they had anger management issues. So we did aggression replacement training with them, which was an evidence-based practice program that taught them how to recognize that anger is a secondary emotion and to recognize the primary emotion. And before it gets to anger, you know, exit the anger cycle by choosing something more constructive to do, you know, to help keep them out of trouble. And that was yeah. really a good program. Too. And then here, and, and when I moved to Los Angeles, I'm in Los Angeles, California. When I moved to Los Angeles, I started looking for um, some community work to do as well. And I connected out here with Fostering Hope LA. And they're a um, nonprofit organization that works with foster youth in group homes, as well as in um, foster homes. And some of them are aging out of the foster care system. And we provided a faith-based program to them called um, Power for Life. And with that program, it helped them um, develop job skills, interview skills, connected them with uh, leaders in the community that would help get them jobs. Perfect. That's, so that's, it's, kind of, it's always been a passion for me to have some type of positive community impact even before working with children and working with the youth or working with the homeless. Um, I also worked with the Red Cross. I volunteered with them in disaster services, uh, CPR instructor, all of that kind of stuff. So I just really enjoy giving back. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that is, you know, that is, that is absolutely um, amazing, you know, and the homelessness as, homelessness as well. I mean, that is such a big thing around the world and it's something that, technically shouldn't even be shouldn't actually even be 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 there um 
but it's great that you're actually you know helping out that but she said you know you you can you know you had those times where where technically you were homeless we were in a homeless shelter or a battered women's shelter. It was pretty tough times. We had times we had to stay with our family members, you know, for various different reasons, you know, and you just never know. And one of the things that I always talk to people about, whether it's youth or just whether it's people in general, when we talk about homelessness, is you, you never know when that person could be you. People have a tendency sometimes to look down on other people. And I can remember there was a time um, we were doing a feeding when I was in Georgia and there was a family that came up. The guy had a very, very nice car. And, you know, he was a top six figure earner at one point, but something happened and his job shut down. And now he has to come, you know, to a food pantry to get food for his daughters and his family, you know, and people are looking and going, why would you give them food? They need food like anybody else. This is a car they had when they were working. They're not going to get rid of the car because now they're not working because they, they because they still need transportation. You know, so sometimes we just have to take the mindset and help where we can help without judging why somebody is where they are. And sometimes it may even be helpful. I love to sit sometimes and just ask the question, how did you get here? And you'll find that people had magnificent lives at some point and there was something that happened and that switched off. And now they're homeless or they're living in a situation that they're, you know, that they're not proud of. Um, when I, recently, we fed about 200 people in the Los Angeles area. We actually provided clothing like coats and pants and sweaters. And we made chili um, and cornbread as a team, you know, through, through the motorcycle club. Um, I'm a rough rider. Um, my name is L.A. Sunshine. So <laughs> with the rough riders, we all came together and pretty much along with our sponsor. We have a sponsor. Her name is Black Widow. She donated 130 blankets to our cause. And we went out on the streets and served the food as well as providing the clothing. And you ask a lot of stories and people, you know, some people were actors at one point and it turned around and now they're on the street homeless. You just never know what could happen and that life change could happen, you know? So it's not good to look down on people, you know, do what you can to help. And some of it also is mindset. I met a young man every once in a while, if I'm out and I see someone, like if I go in a subway and there's a guy sitting there and he's homeless, I'll ask the subway, um, the cashiers, can he come in and tell you what he wants on his sub? And I'll actually buy him a sub or a sandwich, you know, but in return, the only thing I ask is, you know, how did you end up here? And there was one young man, he was here because his parents left and he he just felt like he couldn't make it. And that mindset of I can't make it, he's not making it. When if you just shift, you have to shift the mindset of what you can do because you can do so much. You just got to believe you can do it. The other side of it is being resourceful. There are so many resources, whether it's people or whether it's funding and so many different areas that you have to reach out and you just have to find it. It takes the take action component. So along with believing and wanting to do something, you also have to take action and taking the steps needed to achieve what it is that you need to achieve. Yeah. Makes abs makes absolute sense when you, when you actually break it down like that. But we 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 complicate things so much in our lives. We don't look how simple how simple steps it really is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, to to change to change our lives if if we really if we really change our mindset and we actually take action with it. So how did you end up around with your business? How did that come about? At one point, um, I really wanted to help other people. There was, I noticed that there are some businesses that started to go under and what was basically happening is they're not transitioning. Change is needed sometimes, change and innovation. You know, a new way of looking at things sometimes is needed for your business to survive. Times change, customer desires and needs also change. And if you can't shift to what's potentially, I hate to use the word trending, but what may be trending or what may be the new thing, then your business may lose out. And sometimes you may not know what that is. I mean, you think about some of the restaurants that went under just because they wouldn't adapt to using Uber Eats yeah. or um, Postmates or some of those other technology driven food delivery services because they didn't, you know, they weren't familiar with it or they were scared of it, you know, whatever the reason may have been. But you have businesses that lost out, especially during COVID when you couldn't go to a restaurant and the restaurants had yeah. to pretty much close their doors. So 
you know, without having a delivery service while food could still be delivered. So seeing a lot of businesses struggle, knowing the corporate, um, the, the corporate knowledge that I do have and understanding, being, being able to see, you know, that there's a lot of knowledge here that people really just don't have. I wanted to bring that knowledge to the small business and the, and the entrepreneur. Then I've always had an entrepreneurial passion, even working for a corporation, I've always had a, we call it a side hustle. I've always had a side hustle. I mean, everything from Avon and Tupperware, Mary Kay, um, Christmas around the world, just, I think just about everything there was, I think I've dabbled in it at some point or another and was really good at it. You know, sometimes you're just moving around. I did the prepaid legal at one point, uh, even Electrolux at some point. I think the only thing I didn't sell was cars and houses. But I thought about it. <laughs> Yet, there's still time. Yes. And then I come from a family of long-term entrepreneurs. My father was an entrepreneur. In his house, he had a print shop. So he actually had a printing press in his living room. He did oils. He sold, he sold clothes. So he, he was, he was a, a mechanic at one point. He had his own body shop. He loved. He was a Mercedes-Benz mechanic uh, with his own shop. My grandfather was also an entrepreneur. He was a, a mortician. He had two funeral homes. I've heard stories of my grandfather when he first started his business in the funeral home business of him embalming his first bodies. That was way back in the day. You can't do this now. But way back in the day, he embalmed his first body literally on his kitchen table because he was determined that he was going to make his business work. I'm, I'm glad I wasn't in there at that time, but I'm just Oh, saying. God, can you imagine? <laughs> uh, yeah, we can have dinner in a minute. Just let me finish the embalming. <laughs> you know, so it's all about the passion and what you really want to do. The other part of it is I love and enjoy helping people. You know, so if we can help each other, that makes work, life, you know, everything we do so much better. I actually hired... Uh, executive coach myself, I was going through some things uh, with my corporate job and I was fighting some, um, I guess you could call it male dominated mindset kind of issues. And I started to wonder when you start to face things like that, it makes you kind of guess, second guess yourself. It's like, is it me or is this really the case? So I said, you know what? I want to hire a coach and see if I can get some help because I want to be successful. I want to keep on growing. I want to keep on doing what I need to. And I don't want to be the problem, right? Yeah. So I attended a Tony Robbins, um, what is it? Unleash the Power Within seminar. It was awesome, one of his conferences. And I hired one of his coaches. And going through the coaching with her, she helped me realize a couple of things. One was the issue wasn't me. She gave me some tips and techniques on how to communicate a little differently that may would have been heard a little better. Um, some of it, it was some of it was male, female. Also, there were some, I think, gender and not gender, but um, age differences, too. Yeah. Sometimes if you're trying to communicate and you know what you're talking about and there's that generational. That generational gap where somebody may be old enough to be your father. Yeah. And you're trying to tell him and give him information. And he's determined that his information is right when it's when it's not. You even yeah. present the facts to show and policy, procedure, etc. They still don't want to go with it, you know, because they're supposed to be ultimately yeah. right, you know. So, um, in talking to the executive coach, she helped me with a lot of that, and actually showed me that was something I wanted to do as well. And she asked me, she said, "Why why aren't you doing this?" And before actually having my own coach, I really didn't know what that kind of coaching looked like until I spent time with her as my coach. And then I found out as we went through, I really had been doing coaching all along in the corporate world. You're doing it with your employees. You're doing it with your leadership teams. You're already doing it. You just, you just hadn't formally called it coaching necessarily. Okay. Yeah, that ma that makes that makes sense. Yeah, you've you've kind of been doing it, but you just don't realise that that you're doing it again. Something so simple, um, uh, about about it. So, so 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 was that sort of like thinking? Okay, then I can actually have a coaching business. I mean, was it to leave the corporate job, or was it okay? Now I want to do it along the side of until I have to retire. Well, eventually. I would like to be able to do it um, full time. Yeah, I just haven't made that transition just yet, too. So I'm doing it alongside my business. 
Yeah. But what I'm finding, I think, and I've had so many tell me this, that working in the corporate job is actually keeping me from being able to fully engross myself in my business. And there may be some truth to that. I just don't think I'm ready to let go of the corporate side. And I'm still, you know, there's still so much impact that I create on that side as well. And yeah. I do enjoy the work that I do. Yeah. And, I, and, I th- and I think that is the thing, isn't it? You know, if, if you enjoy it, then you're, you know, and you are making a difference in that, in that corporate job, then yeah, you, you know, stay, build the business up. And then it, when it gets to that point where you don't enjoy it anymore, or you feel you're not, or you've done, you've done all you can within that business, then you've got something to go, okay, I can now go on and uh, do that. And that says so you're kind of like helping two lots of people, really. You're helping sort of like the men in the business, in the corporation side, but the women in the business side, you know, in the coaching business side. And the women too in the corporate side, because there are a lot of women that I work with. So I work with them as well. So I think it helps them also. Sometimes your presence creates a level of encouragement as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that, I do eventually. That... Eventually, I want to transition because I would like the freedom of controlling my own time. You know. Yeah. Yeah. More bike rides. More time with the grandkids. Yeah, <laughs> so, 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 how do you work with clients? You know, if so, if somebody comes to you, how do you work with them? So we go through an an intake process where we sit down, and it's really important to make sure that you and your coaching clients are a good fit. I've hired a coach before myself and our personalities were not a good fit. I'm very good with someone who's pretty direct, pretty much to the point. I don't need the sugar coating and the extra, you know, oohs and ahs, but there are people who prefer a softer approach. So we do an intake process that way we can make sure that we're definitely a good fit. And then to see what it is you're trying to achieve what it is you or your business are trying to achieve. That's when it comes down to the person. Now for the business, I'll go in and I'll look at the business on the consultation side because I go into facilities or um, sites all the time. And I'll look at everything from sanitation, you know, to your OSHA compliance, to your employee development program, to your operations, you know, how the staff are actually performing on the job, you know, and we can sit down and come up with a plan on what needs to be addressed. So it really just depends on which group I'm working with at the time. For the, the individual, I also have a, a hybrid program. So what we, what we do along with the intake is you have the group program that you're in where you're paired with other people that you're working with, as well as the one-on-one sessions with me. And in those, there's, there's various training modules that goes with the group sessions. Okay. Yeah, that makes and And working in a group as well is good because you've got the support. Yes. In the groups, people are cheering you on. You're also hearing the other ideas. Sometimes people are going to ask questions that you, you have that same question, but you may have the fear of asking the question or it's a question maybe you didn't even think about. So other people, so you're learning from each other while you're also learning from me in the group. So it's definitely, I love the group interactions. Yeah. That, 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 yeah. That, I, I was going to say the energy must be absolutely amazing. Um, uh, where you know when when you're working with, with a group of people um, to together. So in your um, coaching business, is it mainly women you work with, or do you work with men as well? I work with men as well, but majority is women. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which 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 make which makes sense. Um, uh, sort of like you, you probably would attract because I, th- I think women tend to go more for business coaches and that don't they them than men do because men men no offense to them but they kind of like no I can do this myself right a lot of times when I'm working with the men it's usually training type of programs like public speaking um, train the trainer so I can cert- I certify trainers or leadership training that's usually where the guys kind of you know flow into yeah 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 again you can kind of like see where that kind of like um tra- where that tra- transitions in so that brings us quite nicely to as you know i do um angel overkill cards and guided meditation so each week i like to ask my guests whether they would like me to pull an angel oracle card for them and those watching or to do a mini guided meditation so regina what would you like me to do 
I've never had an angel oracle card pull, pulled for me. In so that case, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so so how I work with the cards is um, everything I do is for what we need to know for our highest good in this moment in time in the present. So even though I work with the past, with the past life stuff, it's when we go back to the past, we clear and heal that stuff so that we can be back fully present and live in our present. And when I work with the future stuff, it's so we know where our future is, so we're not worried about it, so we can be fully back and in our present. So it's always for, for what we need to know for our highest good in this moment in time. So what does Virginia and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? Virginia and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good. Time. So, what are we looking at? Okay, so we have got grounding, go deep, explore your roots, which is an absolutely beautiful card and kind of like ties in quite nicely with what we've actually been. Um, what we've actually been talking about today as well which is which is always sort of fascinating so it you know it is their own com, you know confirmation that you know when we actually dig deep and we actually look into um in into ourselves into where we've come from all our past experiences they really help us stay grounded in the current um you know to help so that we can actually move forward um you know with with no issues or, or worrying about it so you know so it's saying you know take that take that time to explore and go and go and go deep um in into your roots into what you into what you've done in the past and allow it to ground yourself because when you're grounded things are going to move a lot a lot faster pace and things are going to come to you a lot quicker um, than they are than they are at the moment. If that kind of like makes sense, it does to you. And and again, you know, that's for everyone watching as as well. You know, you need you 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 need to go deep and explore explore your roots. You know, where do you come from? What lights you up? What is your passion? You know, what can ground you and and so you can be fully present in the here and now and actually create the miracles and the manifestations in your life. So it's a beautiful card. So thank you for allowing me to pull this card for you and uh, oh, those watching. Um, it's it's a it's a really brilliant card. So Regina, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Yes, and thank you so much for pulling that card. That was my first. Excellent. Well, hopefully, it won't be your last. Okay. So just to leave everybody with a, a couple of things, embrace your fears, find out why it's a fear for you, find a way to overcome and face those fears. Don't let your fear prevent you from creating the impact in your life and even in the world that you're destined to create. Remember to love yourself because it starts with the love of you and the love of your mindset to make sure your mindset is set to help create the encouragement and the confidence that you need to take your next steps. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for those words of wisdom. Um, you know, they, 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 again, so simple yet so true. Um, so, so that's brilliant. Thank you so much. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful as I know I certainly have. Um, so now, Regina, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? So if you would like to connect, uh, you can follow me on my website, uh, www.breaklimitscoaching.com. You can sign up for our um, tips and tricks. You can also follow me on Instagram, on IG, um, break underscore limits underscore, co underscore coaching. I'm also on Facebook as at Break Limits Coaching. Excellent. And feel free to email us at Regenia at BreakLimitsCoaching.com. And thank you so much, Ray. And thank you, everybody else, for your time today. 
Uh, it's it's been it's been absolutely amazing. And what I'll do is I'll put those um, those links in the comments after the show, so that people can just literally click on them and go straight to it without without type without typing them in. So um, thank you, Regina, for being on the show and thank you for those watching. And of course, for anyone watching, you know, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need some help and guidance, finding the meaning of your life and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you. So please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free video clarity call to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny. And please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other little free mm -hmm. gifts. Um, and again, thank you so much for watching this show. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on my YouTube channel, then please feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the show goes live or when I post new guided meditations that can help you on your journey. And I look forward to seeing you all same time, same place next week. Thank you again, Regina, and thank you for watching. Bye.